Hello and welcome to Two Guys One Game. This time round we're taking a look at the surprisingly few video games based on 2000 AD's gruff voice heavily chinned lawmaker Judge Judy. I thought I'd have loads of games to go through here but turns out there's only a handful which is kind of surprising. But how about I shove the hell up and we take a look at some games. That's not good. We're going to start with Judge Dredd for the PlayStation 1, mainly because I can't really tell you much about it or even show you very much, but it does exist so let's take a look. It's a light gun game that starts off with some awesome campy FMV cutscenes, showing Dredd get his mission and generally be a badass as he sets out to rescue some civilians and stop an evil bastard from blowing up a large chunk of Mega City 1. When the gameplay starts, you get a quite impressive looking rail shooter, where enemies teleport in from all over the place and start blasting you. The backgrounds here are all pre-rendered and it looks pretty decent, with certain sections being destructible and sometimes containing power-ups. The enemies are all polygons and they sometimes look a little out of place, but do have a lot of detail on them. Overall, the graphics here are very good. You only have to worry about shooting and reloading. Unfortunately though, I don't have a light gun, so I had to use a controller, and while the cursor was responsive enough, it was pretty slow, and it was all but impossible to not take damage. But you know how earlier I said I can't show or tell you much of anything? Well, that's because no matter how much I tried, the game would just crash every few minutes, so I didn't actually get to play it for more than a few minutes at a time without having to reset and start again, which is a real shame, as I do like this style of game, and was keen to see what it was like. So yeah, that's really all I can tell you about this one. I thought it looked great with some real campy FMV and the light gun shooting would have been fun, but if it's actually any good, I don't really know. But I just wanted to include it here anyway. So now let's go back to the Commodore 64 for Dread's first video game outing. It's a side-scrolling shooter where you play as Dread, or actually it might be Thanos. Either way, it's okay with me. As with a lot of old C64 games, the gameplay can take a while to actually figure out, but if you give it a bit of time, it's an alright game. Basically, you're shown a map of Mega City 1 and some crimes going on within it. You choose which crime you want to stop, and this could be anything from littering to murder, and then you have to hunt down and stop the perps doing it. Of course, it's never that simple. Mega City 1 is a large interconnected maze with city streets, apartment buildings and sewer systems that you'll need to explore in order to find your perp. It's also filled with other creeps and robots that need taking out along the way. You do have to work fast though, as if more than 8 crimes happen at once, then it's game over. Graphically, the game looks pretty good for the C64, with a lot of colours and decent looking characters. The colours are a little bit dodgy though, but not really too much to complain about. The animation here is a little choppy and it can make it hard to line up your shots, but you do get used to it. And speaking of shots, you have a few options here. You can either just yell at perps to halt, or you can fire a warning shot above their head, or you can go straight to the kill. You just have to press the button to switch between which one you want to do. You never really know which of these is the best option, sometimes just shouting at an enemy is enough to get them to surrender, but let's be honest, as far as I could tell, there's no penalty that I noticed just for killing everyone you see, so I just did that. Get rid of that criminal scum. And that really is all there is to the game. I was pleasantly surprised by how much I enjoyed it, as it was the first Judge Dread game. I wouldn't say it's a particularly great game, it's average at best, and it's more confusing than it needs to be. But again, that's really just a product of its time. If you do have a C64 though, it will entertain you for a few minutes. Just make sure you read the manual before you start playing. As most good things do, Dredd got himself a crap but good movie in the 90s starring Sylvester Stallone. Of course, this also got a video game adaptation for just about every console of the time, which means we've probably got a steaming pile of Judge Death crap. Well, actually no. This is the SNES version of the game and it is of course a side-scrolling action game that kind of follows the plot of the movie. You get a handful of levels, each of which has a few objectives within, as well as a whole load of perps to shoot in the face. The game looks really good, with some dark detailed graphics and there's some nice weather effects on the levels too, and there's even some cool cutscenes. The animation here is also very good, with Dread and enemies all moving smoothly. Thankfully the controls match this and controlling Dread is easy. 
though it does take a while to get used to jumping and ducking, making it hard to avoid enemy attacks to begin with. As Dread, you have a decent selection of weapons at your disposal. You've got your Lawgiver pistol that has infinite ammo, but you can find plenty of other weapons like homing rockets, grenades and more. Each of these come in handy for different situations, but something that is very noticeable is that all enemies take way too many shots to put down. You do also have a melee attack, and this appears to do the most damage, but of course you have to get in close to the enemies, which will usually mean you taking damage. Sometimes though, no matter if you melee or shoot an enemy, they will surrender, and then you have the chance to either finish them off, or you can arrest them, which is a nice touch. You do have a generous life bar, but health power-ups are hard to come by, and they're often in hidden areas that are a bit of a pain to find. Your mission objectives can also be a pain, as they're often quite obscure, and although you are told what you need to do, you're rarely told how to do it, which made even the first mission drag on longer than needed to, well, for me at least, because I'm not that bright. Though, to be fair, once it was over, things did get a lot more simple. What is annoying though, is that you do have to access computer terminals to see your mission status, as well as check your ammo and health. This is kind of pointless, mainly because your ammo and health are at the top of the screen, but it would have been nice just to have a pause menu rather than a slow, clunky terminal. You don't ever actually need to look at this though, as you are updated on screen when you complete an objective, so I guess you can just ignore them. Judge Dredd is definitely not an easy game. But I would say it has a fair difficulty. Like a lot of games from this era, you do have to get used to the enemy patterns and level layouts. But once you do, you'll actually have a lot of fun with this. I would even go as far to say that it qualifies as a bit of a hidden gem. Now, how about we take a brief look at the other versions? This one here is the Mega Drive version. Now, while I would say the Super Nintendo version just beats it to being the best one, the Sega Mega Drive, or Genesis if that's how you choose to live your life, version is a very close second. In terms of graphics, it's almost identical, but it's a little bit lower resolution. The sounds here are also not quite as good, but still sound alright, and thankfully they don't use that Mega Drive fart noise generator. Other than that though, it's basically the same game, and is well worth checking out. The Game Gear got a version of the game too. This is of course a cut down version of its 16-bit brothers, but it's largely the same. I have to say I really love the graphics here, and while the controls are a little delayed and the gameplay is a bit simplified, it does still include a similar mission objective style play, and it's still fun. I ended up playing this for a lot longer than I expected. Something I didn't mention when I was talking about the other versions is that climbing ladders is a big part of the game, and they're often hard to see in any version of the game or they're things that you didn't even realise were ladders. Well, the Game Gear version is probably the worst for obscure looking ladders, but once you know what to look out for, you'll probably be fine. This is actually a solid game for the handheld, and I would recommend checking it out if you've got a Game Gear. And finally for the movie tie-in, this is the Game Boy version, which is a port of the Game Gear version. This is definitely the worst of the bunch, and though while I wouldn't say it's a bad game, the controls aren't as responsive as the other versions, and there's a fair bit of slowdown. But again, the core gameplay is there, keeping the mission-based gameplay and some good shooting that's only marred by the fact that the enemies take way too many shots to kill. But again, it's not a bad game, and while I'd never recommend this over the likes of Contra, if you see it cheap, you could do a lot worse. And finally for today, in what I think is Judge Dredd's most recent video game appearance, is Dread vs Death. This here is the GameCube version, but it was also released on just about everything at the time. Dread vs Death is a first person shooter, and the story sees a death cult bring the evil Judge Death out of prison. So of course Dread and the other judges lock and load and head out to stop Death from turning everyone into vampires and zombies. Which by the way is one of the coolest stories in any video game ever. Anyway. The first thing I noticed is that the game looks great. The art style really matches the look of the comics, and the cyberpunk cities and all their inhabitants look fantastic. Everything can skirt the lines of sometimes being a bit drab though, with a lot of greys and browns in the colour palettes, but it does kind of match the aesthetic of the comics. Controlling Dread is good, but definitely not perfect. The jumping is very clunky, but thankfully there aren't many places where you need to jump. Also, aiming can be very tricky. Even with auto-aim turned on here, you need to be extremely accurate. 
and most enemies are very slim and fast moving which makes accuracy very tough. Thankfully though you do get a decent amount of ammo so sometimes the spray and pray method works. You also have a melee attack but I found that this was pretty useless and I hardly managed to hit anyone with it. In the end I just stopped trying. Most enemies in the game are vampires and zombies that actually kill you pretty easily if they get too close so it was best just to stay away from them anyway. When you're in gunfights your enemies will often surrender once they see the what a badass you are of course. Some levels require you to arrest perps rather than kill them and this is done by holding the Z button and pressing the action button when you're close to them. What's cool is that the message comes up on the screen telling you who they are, what their crimes are and how long they're going to be in jail for. This is a really cool touch and the humour thrown in when it comes to these names of perps and their crimes is really good. You get a few weapons here but the main star is your Lawgiver pistol which has loads of firing modes. It's got your regular rapid fire, heat seeking, explosive, ricochet and flame shots. These all use the same ammo type but some use more ammo per shot than others. This makes choosing your ammo in gunfights quite strategic, though to be fair I did find that thanks to the tricky aiming I mainly stuck to the rapid fire so I could just spray and pray like I said earlier. The levels themselves are all pretty large with multiple objectives and they're your usual fare of killing, rescuing, destroying and activating. They do a good job of mixing things up though and each level does feel different to the previous one. It is a bit of a shame that there weren't more types of enemies to keep things more fresh Although, to be fair, they do introduce a few new ones in most levels, but it usually boils down to the same kind of thing and they just have a new weapon or something like that. I did find that on a few levels I was wandering around aimlessly a lot more than I would have liked to, although you do get a marker showing your objective, I still sometimes wouldn't know what the hell I needed to do to get there, and it turns out I would have missed a tiny button or a terminal that I needed to destroy to progress. As well as the story mode though, which by the way can be played in two player split screen co-op, you also have an arcade mode where you have given a series of challenges to complete, usually within a time limit or with only one life. These are things like arresting a certain amount of perps or killing a certain amount of all zombies. This mode is pretty fun and you'll unlock new characters to use in multiplayer as you play. Unfortunately though, I didn't get to play the multiplayer here, but I do have a feeling that with the tricky aiming and limited weapons, it probably wouldn't be the best one out there. As for the rest of the game though, I would recommend getting a hold of it if you can. It is a little rough around the edges, but I had a really good time playing through it. I'm going to assume that the PC version is probably the best one out there, as the mouse and keyboard would make a huge difference to my aiming problem, but playing on the GameCube was still a very good experience, and it's a shame that no one talks about it. I would have loved to have seen a sequel. So there you go, a brief look at every Judge Dredd game I could find. I've seen there was a cancelled arcade game which was going to be a Final Fight style brawler but it was never finished which is a shame. Which one is your favourite? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, we upload new videos when we've made them and you can follow me on Instagram where I've got hundreds of retro video game reviews. Just search The Reviews Brothers. Now all that's left for me to say is thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.